This is a uh, short film about Pi Westminster, W15FM, originally produced in the Pi factory at Cambridge from about 1966 onwards and probably ended 1970, 1971. This particular model is on 4 meters amateur radio band which is 70 megs to 70.5 megs 12.5 kc steps and this is a 10 channel Pi Westminster as can be seen here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 crystals and then 7, 8, 9, 10 unoccupied it is a 10 channel Westminster if it was a single channel Westminster it will only have one oscillator in it and it will only have three knobs at the front, not four knobs at the front. Turn it around the right way, which would help. Channel chain switch. On, off. Squelch and volume. If I turn it the other way up, you can see here the other set of oscillators here for transmit. The oscillators underneath being for receive the 455kc block filter this here is the transmit strip which starts at low frequency and then comes up to approximately a quarter of a watt at uh, 70 megs having multiplied the crystals up through there through there to 7450 for instance and then that is passed through to the other side of the Westminster to the power amplifier. That is the 10.7 meg IF strip with the 10.7 meg uh, crystal filter. And this is the RF front end, which comes away from the coaxial relay, which is located in the front of the set here. We have a little harmonic filter, a small harmonic filter there. And we have here a squelch board and 455kc IF injector board and audio so that is the general view of the top side of a Westminster here is the general view of the bottom side PA strip on transmit so the quarter watt from the board underneath on top is amplified there to approximately between 10 and 15 watts in an FM Westminster. If this was an AM Westminster, you might get 7 or 8 watts out of it with a bit of tweaking. Here is the other half of the uh, bottom top of the 455kc IF filter, which is silver in colour. So it is a 12.5kc S filter, 12.5kc channel spacing. Here is the multiplier strip from the RX crystals here, of which there is an oscillator, oscillator, oscillator per channel. So if it is a single channel, all that will be missing, and it will be just a single crystal holder there. And then that is multiplied up in that multiplier to 10.7 megs below the required receive frequency. So that would be 70 Point seven, say minus 10.7 it would multiply up to 60 megs that's just for an easy calculation 70.7 is not within the 4 meter amateur band here is the audio strip this is the audio PA strip uh, power amplifier with about uh, a couple of a watt or so of audio out of it and this here is the 455kc FMIF with a discriminator coil here, the big can here, for um, a demodulation of the uh, the FM modulation from the uh, RF uh, uh, carrier. And then that is then fed by the squelch unit on the other side to turn the squelch on and off, to turn the noise on and off, into the audio amplifier. Now, obviously for conversion of one of these you would need to have a reasonable signal generator which goes up to at least 100 megs uh, or even up to a hundred a couple of hundred megs if you're doing a high band one of these which would be up to uh, between 132 and 172 megs so the crystals there which are plugged in 
And I think I have an example of a crystal on the bench here, a slightly smaller crystal, which pertains to the frequency per channel. And the frequencies per channel in this set, channel 1 is 70.26, and uh, channel 3 is 70.450. So that's 70.26 and that's 70.450. So if you look in the manual of the Pi Westminster, you will also find that the multiplication factors for that crystal will come to 10.7 megs per heart below the frequency required. So for 70.7, which is an easy frequency I say again to work with, not necessarily just outside the amateur band, it would be multiply this crystal up to 60 megs and then 60 megs would be amplified here and then it would be injected into the RF front end and the RF front end is just here so there is the mixer the RF front end and that there mixes the 10.7 out to the IFs and the RF coming in at 70 megs, so 70 megs comes in there, the oscillator pushes 10.7 megs up to mix with the 70 megs, and 10.7 is sniffed out of that on this board, and then sent towards the 455kc um, IF filter, and then into the 455kc IF amp, which is again back on the other side of the board, and this is the IF amplification at 455 which ends at the discriminator here and that discriminator core is sensitive to um, uh, frequency modulation and then a couple of diodes on that rectifies the uh, RF to audio in effect simple way of saying it and then that is then transferred by the cabling to the audio amp and so the audio amp there is then taking pure audio out to the speaker and the speaker lead is that which is just hanging out the back there and that's the 12 volts so hanging there as well now on a Westminster if you look inside the lid of a Westminster they very nicely usually put this diagram so that you can follow this diagram uh, as to the layout of where all the boards are and it tells you exactly where all the boards are in the Westminster on the top chassis and the bottom chassis so you can quickly refer back to the manual to see uh, what you are working on and that's just within usually the top lid or the bottom lid of uh, the Westminster which of course sits on the on the unit like that so that is the basic layout of a Pi W15 FM Westminster SO239 aerial socket just here and the plaque which has been slightly painted over there turn it round the right way and there is the plaque which is uh, painted uh, white somebody has decided to paint this one yellow and white round the outside now normally blue in colour uh, And uh, that is that. Now, for actually tuning one up on receive, you would have to have a tool such as this, which has got a very small um, protrusion of uh, copper uh, cable there, and that would have to be inserted. And I'll use this uh, one here, which is a, a duff one, into the core into the ferrite to turn the ferrite gently very gently in the coil in order to tune them up and down now this has to be done extremely carefully as the ferrite is very very brittle in the cores having sat there for between 35 and 40 years plus and there's usually a little piece of rubber down the side of the cores within within there that uh, hinders you from turning them and if I turn one here upside down and bring a core out there you can just see the little bit of uh, 
plastic that stops the core from moving. I'll bring that back out a bit more. That one is a very, very free core indeed, very free. So there it is. You've got to be very, very careful with this and have a nice little sharp piece of copper on the end of the tool in order to uh, tweak it. These are actually RS tweaking tools. They may not be available now from RS as uh, time has marched on. But uh, you can make one very carefully out of a sliver of copper cable by beating it, beating it hard, uh, one, one mil copper. You've got to be very, very careful with how you do that. These are the can screens that sit across the coils in order to screen them and stop uh, interference and also uh, detuning of the of the coils so in order to tweak this uh, rf front end up you would need to put a signal generator in here at 400 70.450 megs and then 70.450 one two three four five cores to the mixer coil and then at the mixer coil you would have from this side of the set the 60 megs at this multiplier so that multiplier there takes the basic crystal frequency and multiplies it up to 60 megs and then adds the 60 megs through into the mixer coil there so that you have 10.7 meg out 70 megs in 60 megs in and 10.7 megs out and that equates to a frequency of 70.7 megs in through the aerial socket 70.7 megs minus 60 megs equals 10.7 megs so the first process in the receiver would be to tune these coils here to get at that output there 60 megacycles and the best way of doing that in my opinion or an easy way of doing that is to use a receiver listening at 60 megs a scanner or something like that in order to monitor that point there there are test points on these uh, on these uh, boards it's very stiff i'm not going to pull that off those coils i'll probably break them now in my luck so the crystals must then be proven to you also so if you have an hf receiver you can listen to the basic frequency of the crystal say it's about probably about 20 megs or something i'm unsure what the multiplication factor is but that is stated for the eban model of a pi westminster in the manual and then that once you've got that oscillating you have the little trimmer by each oscillator in order to bring it onto frequency when you've multiplied it up and then this one this one and this one would need to be very 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 gently tweaked at the output there to get the 60 megs and once you've got a lot of 60 megs available there you will then be able to put your signal generator in here into the so239 here socket into the front end and one two three four five trimmers need to be gently tuned with the receiver tuned to 70.7 megs which is the, the test receive frequency that I've, I've decided upon that's easy for mathematical use with this uh, demonstration and then gradually you will hear the signal generators mod modulated tone come through as this is tweaked this is tweaked this is tweaked this is tweaked and this is tweaked on the audio output of this receiver not on the HF receiver. The HF, the, the receiver that's listening at 60 megs will prove that your uh, multiplier is there. And if this is working and the 455KC IF is working, none of which needs tuning because that is all preset, you'll get the audio out of there, white noise, first of all, with the squelch turned uh, uh, off so that there's white noise available and then you will hear the signal come through there and get stronger and stronger and stronger as you ge very very gently tweak these coils in probably in because um, 70 megs being at the lower end of the band it's most unlikely that standard westminsters were being used at the other end of the band say 78 megs 79 megs you'll have to come down about 8 megs so you need to tune these into the coils 
in order to bring them there. But because there is an injection frequency there, and if you put a high enough level of RF into this socket here from a signaling, not from a radio transmitter, else you'll blow it up, uh, you will then get a signal in the audio of the uh, loudspeaker plug there and you should then be able to very very gently tweak these for maximum but you also then need to go back to these once you've got a signal there and you've turned the signal generator down and attenuate it you need to tweak these for maximum again so retweak these for maximum and then go back across and retweak the front end again for maximum plug an aerial into it don't just tweak it without an aerial into it um, you can eventually put the aerial into that put a an aerial on the uh, signal generator just on the signal generator an aerial on the set and then the signal generator if it's the set is then sensitive enough sensitive enough will then receive the signal generator's output proving the sensitivity of the receiver and that should be round about 122 dBm, something like that, on a, uh, to open the squelch on one of these, 120, 120 dBm, minus 128 to uh, 22 dBm of, um, of signal out of the generator, or about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a microvolt. Now, on the side of the RF strip here are some little test points which you can put the positive end of your AVO on and measure voltage and just uh, get that in there which is that little just there and there's another one just here but those test points are mentioned within the uh, Westminster manual there's a coil without its uh, cap on. Of course, in order to tweak that up, you would have to put the tool in like that and gently tweak the course. But they are very, very brittle. Very brittle indeed. So you have to be very careful with those cores. Now, shall we talk about the transmitter? The transmitter, if we turn this over, sorry, if we leave it that way, which is the way I want it, the transmitter again, there are crystals here, crystals in channels 1 to 6, others missing obviously if it was only a single channel this would all be empty and there'll be one crystal uh, oscillator only at the front and these do come in 10 channel Westminsters 6 channel Westminsters or single channel Westminsters so that frequency of that crystal is probably divided by 12 so probably about 6 12s or something uh, like that uh, to multiply up towards uh, 70 megs so say those are 6 meg crystals for instance and then multiply those would oscillate there at their base frequency of 6 megs and then in order to get those to uh, multiply up this strip here this RF transmit strip which right down at this end here on these two uh, right in the corner here um, are the balanced FM deviation pair these two have to be tweaked slightly when they've got RF in them probably at, uh, at the 6 meg frequency in order to get enough deviation out of the audio amp the mic audio amp which is over here which pumps the audio into there from the microphone to wobble the oscillator and then as that is multiplied up throughout the train to comes to 70 megs every time you double it you double the deviation double the deviation double the deviation until you get to times 12 uh, it might be times 2 times uh, times 12 and then at the end here these coils here which have larger um, 
uh, loops on them, as you can see there, are at 70 megs. So you will get about a quarter of a watt out there. Uh, 6 megs here, then it multiplies up, say, times 3, and then it multiplies up again, and then it comes to the, the 12th harmonic, and it extracts it here at 72 megs. So the why 70 megs, 70.7 70 megs, if we're talking about that test frequency again. And then that is fed through the board to the PA strip. And there is the PA strip with some little butterfly trimmers hiding under this canopy. 12 volt supply there, an RF out of this end, about 10 watts, which is again then fed back through the set to come out into the harmonic filter here, which stops the third harmonic, 3 times 70 megs from radiating, and then into the transmit receive changeover relay and out to the outside world on the RF socket, where you would plug a power meter or SWR bridge or something like that in order to indicate forward and reverse RF power. Again, this transmit strip consists of these very brittle cores, which you need a nice solid trimmer for. And these all have to be tweaked very carefully, very, very carefully at their appropriate frequency, so again an HF receiver or a scanner you can listen to the oscillator and tweak that up for maximum until the maximum signal bursts out on your scanner and then go to the third harmonic and tune that and then finally to 70.7 megs because this doesn't use an IF or anything on transmit at true frequency uh, and then tweak that up for maximum and then once you tweak that up for maximum you should find that turning it over and going to the PA block, you will get a large amount of it. Once you tweak these trimmers gently, and I estimate, uh, emphasize the word gently, and you should then start to get some RF out of the socket, which is on this side as I've turned the set upside down. And again, you need to turn a scanner down or attenuate a scanner or have a power meter or an SWR bridge, a CB SWR bridge or something like that, diode sniffer with a, uh, a meter across it, a diode across a meter or in series with a meter, microamp meter, 10, 15 microamp meter. You can use that as a sniffer to hold it near each coil as you go and you will actually see deflection on the meter as you tweak that one as it goes through the resonant peak maximum RF, maximum RF, maximum RF. But you do have to be careful that you end up on the right harmonic, else you might be tuning it up on the third harmonic and end up on 3 times 70 megs, which is 210 megs. And a few taxis and railway buses and stuff like that on band 3 won't be very happy with you. So a band, uh, definitely a wave meter would be required just to prove that, or frequency counter would be required so that you can prove that you are on the correct frequency uh, harmonic output. So eventually you should be able to get RF out of here by tweaking out of this socket and uh, away you go. But if you have a set that's already got crystals in, you can tell, check all this before you start tweaking because you can put your signal generator in at 78.9 megs or 79 megs or whatever frequency channel one is on the set. And then you can see and hear the signal generator, how much you have to turn the signal generator down to get a weak signal and how much you have to turn it right up to to get a strong signal. And if you write down all those values, that gives you a yardstick to work by when you uh, convert it down to uh, a 70 meg amateur band. And likewise, on transmit, you can do the same thing. You can measure the RF out and see how strong the RF field is out of the socket. And also, by waving a diode in series with a, a microamp meter, a multimeter or something, to rectify the RF, you can hold it over these coils and you can see the deflection, a small deflection down here, larger deflection, larger deflection, larger deflection. deflection. And then uh, that would give you some idea on what to expect uh, when you plug in the uh, main crystal because the, you're then at the, the crystal for four meters because then you're at the point of no return because once you start tweaking all these all the other crystals will cease to operate and you will not be able to transmit on 78 megs same time as transmitting on 70 megs 
as the once these coils, coils are tuned, they're very high Q, and they will probably last tune over about 2 meg bandwidth maximum in Westminster, something like that. But since the 70 meg band is only half a meg wide, um, that is more than sufficient to have a reasonable working set upon uh, 4 metres. So, there we have it. An FM Westminster on 70 megahertz. Uh, 70.450 simplex is the calling channel 70.475 uh, 70.425 70.425 70.475 are working channels uh, 70.4 is a working channel 70.4375 is a repeater channel an on frequency repeater channel down at Tring in Hertfordshire uh, that's something interesting to listen to, where you transmit on the same channel, it receives you, and a minute later it retransmits your transmission, parrot-like, on the same frequency, from the top of a hilltop in Tring, and uh, so that you can uh, use it as a uh, as a on-frequency repeater system, in effect. And there's also another one of those down at Coolsdon in Surrey. Coolsdon in Surrey. So, there is a very, very rough idea and guide to how to get a Pi Westminster from its commercial PMR frequency onto uh, the 4 meter amateur band. This is G8EPR for the investigative side of the Pi Museum of Great Britain at Bewdley, Worcestershire. Thank you very much. And the only thing that I would add to this is that in order to get crystals for these sets, crystals being here, try and get in closer to the crystals in their sockets, and the sockets without crystals in, you may buy these from Quartz Lab Crystals Limited, Quartz Lab Limited, who although at the moment were over in Ireland, I believe they are now located back in Great Britain, and they do advertise on the internet, and they do know what Westminster crystal specifications are. If you do look in the manual on the crystal um, I, crystal uh, oscillator information, where it tells you the multiplication factors for the crystals, which, which you need to work out for 70 megs, they already know what's required for 70 meg amateur man crystals, and they will supply you with the cris correct crystals, but I believe now around about £30 plus VAT, per pair and you need one for transmit and one for receive so if you've got a six channel Westminster which I've got here with 12 crystals in it 12 times 15 you can do your own calculations as to how expensive it is these days this is JDPR Dave Hicks signing off